All right, why don't we get started? Uh, on behalf of Inventech, I welcome you to the OCP Summit today. I've been asked to take a few minutes and share with you some of the things that we are doing at Inventech. Step into the future of AI technology with Inventec. For over 50 years, Inventec has been at the forefront of innovation, powering global industries with cutting edge technology and world class engineering expertise. From design to manufacturing, we deliver intelligent solutions for the future. At the OCP Global Summit, we're excited to reveal our latest innovation, the Inventec AI solutions, empowering AI from cloud to edge. Explore how Inventec combines OCP and MGX standards with 50 years of innovation to deliver world-class systems trusted by leading industries worldwide. Our intelligent edge solutions bring AI closer to your operations, enhancing performance across all sectors. Meet our experts and discover how Inventec's legacy of innovation has led to the development of cutting-edge AI server platforms and racks designed to power next-gen AI workloads and revolutionize industries. Join us at Booth B8 to witness Inventec's world-class AI solutions, including our unique liquid cooling systems that set a new standard in AI performance and efficiency. For over five decades, Inventec has driven technological advancements, creating the infrastructure powering today's and tomorrow's most innovative AI solutions. The future of modular AI is here. Join us in Booth B8. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Inventec, so I'll take a, a couple of seconds to introduce you to Inventec. Um, we are a world-class ODM with design and manufacturing capabilities. Um, worldwide, we have 30,000 employees. A little over 20% of those are engineers. And we maintain a value-focused supply chain. Uh, we are headquartered in Taipei, Taiwan, but our global reach is throughout Asia, North America, and Europe. Every year, Inventec produces a hundred, over 100 million devices. And not only do we manufacture those devices, but we also do a lot of the design, either by ourselves or with our partners, to bring these products to market. Design has always been part of our uh, DNA for the last 50 years. We've taken our design capabilities and married them with the concepts of both OCP and MGX. This allows us to quickly innovate solutions for our partners and for our customers. And not only do we design the, these solutions, but we also test them, uh, we qualify them, and we manufacture these solutions. And over the years that we've participated in OCP, We've also given back uh, through designs of switches, system connectivity, power distribution, and our thermal components and AI racks. With our MGX uh, solutions, we take the modular design concepts for thermals and heat from MGX and marry those with uh, our OCP and our design DNA to bring uh, the current generation and future generations to light. So uh, let me take you through some of the products that we've been working on for the last year and uh, share with you both at the box level and at the rack level some of the things we've been working on. This is uh, our first AU AI server platform um, and it supports NVIDIA H100, H200, and B200 modules. We couple uh, Intel's Gen 4, Gen 5 dual socket Xeon processors with uh, universal baseboards. And what we do is we create an interchangeable platform that allows us to uh, use both Open Accelerator and HGX designs. 
In order to do that, we have encapsulated the thermal and power with the UBBs and make it so that we can interchange between both of those, uh, the, the uh, open uh, accelerator and HGX designs. We also separated in this design of 54 volts and 12 volts. We did this to help with the power efficiency and to help with that ever increasing thermals on the GPUs. This design supports both uh, air cooling and liquid cooling. And the liquid cooling is both for CPUs and GPUs. One of the other things that we've been working on is a product we call Sangria. It's, a, it's our AI uh, server platform that incorporates both OCP and MGX standards. We uh, once again use uh, dual Intel processors with uh, open accelerate baseboards in this design. Sangria can host both uh, Gaudi 3 with uh, our uh, UBB 1.5 design and AMD's 300 series with UBB 2.0 designs. The CPU module in, uh, in this design uh, is an MGX uh, design, but it incorporates DC uh, SCM 2.0 and OCP NICs uh, with a switchboard design. We also, in this design, leverage MGX type A, B, and E for front, rear, and power. And with this, uh, with the liquid cooling version of this, you can save uh, almost 1,800 watts on fans so that your thermal um, envelope for this can be quite low at 900 watts. So speaking of thermals, we've also spent a, a time with thermal and thermal solutions. Um, our experience has shown uh, that uh, Air-cooled uh, and traditional heat sinks top out uh, in the 4U space at about 800 watts. The 1U is topping out at about 400 watts. And so for components that have a greater than 800 watt, we, we also incorporate the single phase liquid cooling plate. Uh, and we have seen that the air-cooled versions um, uh, as the one you shows, will top out at 400. But with the use of, of DLCs, we can get into the 1.4 kilowatt range with, with single phase. Um, we are now working on the, the dual phase uh, approach for liquid cooling, for direct liquid cooling, to help with these boxes. Also, when you use liquid cooling, there are, are some uh, disadvantages sometimes. And a lot of that comes around leakage. So what we have done to address this, we've taken two approaches. We've added a reservoir uh, on a cold plate itself and added liquid detection wires so that we can be alerted when leakage does occur. We also have found that the piping uh, to these are prone to leakage. And so we've developed a very uh, unique method to monitor the pipe leakage level without sensors being wrapped on the wire. Uh, and this allows for a, a more cost-effective solution. And not only at the box level, but also at the rack level, we have been innovating. Uh, we incorporate open standards at the rack level, and we use uh, both open rack, MGX racks, and EIA racks. We, also with our racks, power is important to us, and so we have uh, different versions for our customers' different needs. The latest is uh, our 33 kilowatt power shelf that we have integrated into racks. The focus for us on racks is really applications that require high amounts of CPU and GPU and have low latency. So think ther uh, power thermal and connectivity. Uh, for the connectivity, we do uh, work on the high-speed backplane designs, and we support MVLink, UA-Link, and others. And of course, uh, with all racks now, it, the liquid cooling solution is important. For racks, we have deployed racks using rack-mounted in-row and sidecar methods to, to, for cooling. 
We've been uh, using cooling, liquid cooling, in our designs for the last seven or eight years. With uh, direct liquid cooling, we first deployed it with a CSP customer in 2017. And by 2019, we were mass producing these racks for our, our other uh, CSP customers. We are direct uh, liquid cooling technology has included rear door heat exchangers, in-row, uh, in-rack, and sidecar solutions. But we've also been working with immersion cooling since uh, 2017. First with a, a, a closed loop uh, to you system, and then over the years uh, with a, a 54U and a 48U horizontal single phase immersion liquid cooling units. And we are announcing at OCP this year uh, a unique hybrid approach to uh, liquid, direct liquid cooling and immersion cooling that we call vertical single phase immersion. So I'll, I'll spend a, a few slides on this later on. Also with uh, rack designs and cooling, there's always uh, leakage and leakage prevention. So we have, we have a unique design for our, our rack level leakage detection. We do incorporate a drip pan, but we have water deflectors that we've placed throughout the rack and a sensing box at the bottom of the rack. So this design channels any leakage you have into the bottom of the rack into the drip pan. And it's there that we sense the leaks and are able to trigger warnings that go back to the rack level management system. As I said, we've been working with the uh, immersion cooling for the last seven years. And uh, immersion cooling gives us a great PU uh, during operation, but it sometimes can be hard to use and sometimes hard to maintain. And it, it's always hard to scale. Uh, plus immersion cooling doesn't handle some of the high thermal components as well as direct liquid cooling does. So taking this, uh, both of these cases, direct liquid cooling and the advantages of immersion cooling, we have combined liquid cooling and immersion cooling in something we have developed called Lambert. Lambert is a, a rack level cooling system that uses immersion technology at the load at the node and not in the tank. As you can see in this picture, the, the nodes are vertically inserted into a, a rack. And at that insertion time, power is applied as well as coolant interfaces. And the network interfaces uh, appear on the front of the rack. There are several advantages to this that we have found. Um, one is that with this solution, we are seeing we can effectively cool chipsets up to 1.2 kilowatts. Uh, another advantage of this is if a single node goes down, I don't have to take the whole rack offline as you may with a tank. Instead, you can pull out uh, um, one of the nodes itself with, uh, without any special tools and reinstall, swap, uh, a, a node with, with the bad node. We also estimate that because the coolant is contained uh, within the nodes itself, that you can, sa you can save 50% coolant uh, over a tank. So it helps on your uh, OpEx costs. And because this is a rack-based solution and not a tank-based solution, we feel it's easier to scale in large data centers. So uh, this is on display in our booth in B8. Um, we encourage you to come, ask questions, kick the tires, and um, continue helping us with, with this advancement. Also, we are at OCP, we're announcing uh, our Edge Pro line of when you and two use servers. And these truly em embrace um, the OCP concepts. It's a DC MHS compliant Edge server. It's E2 socketed for sixth generation Xeon processors. And that includes uh, the latest Intel accelerators that come in the sixth genera that sixth generation. 
It also gives us some enhanced security measures against firmware attacks, and it's poised for uh, MCR DIMMs and the coming CXL 2.0 specifications. These edge servers have uh, power options, both AC and DC power options. And finally, these edge devices can be loaded with E1.S AI acceleration modules or PCIe AI acceleration modules or uh, GPUs. So we can truly now bring intelligence to the edge. In a world driven by data and speed, decisions are made in the cloud and at edge. Unexpected challenges demand swift, intelligent responses. With the Inventech AI cloud and edge devices, you're always prepared. Managing complex environments, our AI solutions provide the intelligence and agility needed to stay ahead. With unparalleled efficiency, our AI products deliver real-time insights and streamline operations. At the core of innovation, Inventech drive progress in smart cities, healthcare, retail, and manufacturing. Time stops for no one, but with our AI products, you're always one step ahead. Inventec, where innovation meets, in the cloud and on the edge, turning challenge into opportunities. Please join us uh, at our booth B8, and you can see all of these uh, boxes and racks on display. And if you have any real in-depth technical questions, please come to our booth and seek out our, our uh, experts to help you walk you through this. If you would like to get in touch with uh, some representatives from Inventec, um, here are the, the QR codes. All right, thank you.